Hey, what's up folks? Welcome back to the channel. I've got such an interesting video for you today. Things that Americans do that confuse the rest of the world. So seeing as that I'm technically part of the rest of the world, I'm a foreigner. I can give you my honest feedback as to whether the things mentioned in this video are true or not. So without further delay, let's find out what you folks do that confuse the rest of us. I cannot wait for this one. This should be pretty fun. The United States of America is the land of the free, the land home of, of the, the free, brave, baby. and also the home to a lot of weird stuff that most other countries don't do. This former British colony has truly grown up to be its own quirky person. The following 10 things tend to confuse non-Americans, and you can find non-natives of the US of A discussing them all across the internet. Let's see, baby. I'll tell you if it's true or not. Number 10. Tipping. tipping. America definitely isn't the only country in the world where tipping is a common practice. In fact, if you're curious about what jobs get tipped in what countries, there's a website called whodotip.net that breaks down the tipping customs of the world. It's literally a website that tells you the, the tipping culture in every country. That's crazy. So far, uh, this is not weird to me. In South Africa, we do tip servers and, you know, anyone who does things for us so this so far this is this is okay we tip uh you know waiters waitresses um we actually also tip car guards we tip uh fuel attendants you know in the united states you put your own fuel in in uh, south africa we park and someone uh puts the fuel in for us and then we we generally tip them so tipping culture i'm not that's that's normal to me the world. But America is certainly the country where tipping is the most prevalent. In most countries and cultures around the world, tipping is simply an optional charge should you feel your server deserves to be rewarded for their efforts. However, in America, you should always give a tip of around 10 to 20 percent, especially right. at restaurants. Tipping is a big part of American culture, which seems odd to outsiders. People may dislike tipping, but it's probably here to stay. In America, the unspoken system is that food prices and restaurants are lower than they should be because tips allow the restaurant to pay their wait staff less. They can then charge you less for food. At least that's what you can try telling your friend the next time he doesn't want to contribute to the tip at a restaurant because he recently saw Reservoir Dogs. While a lot of people argue that tipping is a good thing because it increases the quality of service you receive, this isn't actually true. Cornell University published a study that revealed the real reason people tip, more or less, is basically random. And customers who receive great service tip on average just 1% more than those who don't. Wow. Lots of people around the world look at America and ask, why not pay service workers a normal amount of money and just make the food more expensive? Number 9. Have few vacations. First, before we continue, they mentioned the movie Reservoir Dogs. I've never watched it. Is that worth watching? And secondly, what do you folks think of tipping culture? Are you okay with it? Do you want it to be reduced slightly? What are your opinions? Always interested to hear. Vacation days. Americans don't go on vacation as much as the rest of the world does. On average, we're given only 12 vacation days by our work as opposed to Europeans who get between 25 and 30. 25 Perhaps more interesting is the fact that Americans on average only use 10 of their 12 given vacation days, whereas Europeans tend to use all of theirs. I guess Americans just can't bring themselves to leave the office while there's still work to be done. And while it may suggest Europeans are lazy, according to a mounting body of research, it's actually counterproductive not to take a vacation, as breaks help us rejuvenate, increasing True. our productivity True. over time. Not only that, when us Americans do go on vacation, we also travel less internationally than citizens of most other countries. But that may be related to our limited number of vacation days. 12 days just doesn't allow for an international trip as well as 30 does. Can I tell you another reason I think that's the case? Is that the United States is so big, each state is so different, that if you live in the United States, oftentimes there's no need to even have a passport. What's the point of visiting another country when there's so many good options in your own country? So the United States is probably one of the countries that you can explore despite living in it and never quite explore everything. It's just so much to see. So I can see that being part of the reason why, you know, Americans travel outside of the US less. As far as the vacation days, so you folks get an average of 12 according to this video. Back home, we get like 15 to 20. So a little bit, little bit more. 
as the time and cost of travel to international destinations is so great. According to the Department of Commerce, American international travelers spent 42% of the cost of their entire trip simply on the travel to and from their destination. It's then Lights, not man. too surprising Lights. that most Americans don't even have a passport. No Only 42% of US citizens own a passport, whereas 76% of English citizens do. That means at least 58% of Americans haven't even left the US, as you need a passport to travel. To the rest of the world, this is an odd characteristic of such a prosperous nation. While it's partly due to limited vacation days, it may also be because Americans lack the desire to travel as much as the rest of the world. Number 8. Food Preferences When you go to a restaurant in America, you're probably going to get a lot of food. At least, a lot more than most other nations would serve. It's a popular topic of discussion amongst non-Americans online. <laughs> Many European tourists admit they would frequently just order one item off the menu and share it with another person. America does it big. And for non-Americans, the size options at fast food restaurants perfectly illustrate this. Take a look at this image by a Japanese citizen in 2011, comparing the sizes of McDonald's drinks in America versus Japan. The medium Japanese cup is the exact same size as the small American cup, and the American medium cup is larger than the Japanese large. That's crazy. But McDonald's is on the small size. Here are the small sizes at a number of vendors, showing just how much larger a small cup is in America. While many oh. around the world like to joke about how it proves Americans are fat, the truth is a lot of them take away their leftovers and carryout boxes to eat throughout the week. Still. American food is vastly different to food found in the rest of the world. For one, non-Americans are, on the whole, less obsessive about peanut butter. Brian Sternthal, a professor of marketing at Northwestern University's Kellogg School of Management, has said that in many parts of the world, peanut butter is regarded as unpalatable American curiosity. For example, according to Statista, Americans eat a kilogram of it per year, compared to 100 grams eaten per person per year in Europe. That's 10 times the amount Europeans eat. Other American food anomalies that have confused I love peanut butter. Why would someone not eat peanut butter? Europeans include comparatively small fruit and vegetable aisles full of fruits and vegetables that will cost you a lot more than they would across the Atlantic, as well as an overabundance of highly processed sweet and salty foods and so-called cheese that can be sprayed out of a can. Number seven, college. So I like, so I'm a big fan of American styled food. Um, so I'm okay with the big portions. The cheese spray, guys. You folks will not get me to try that. That is that is one you know American specific thing that I feel like I will not try is the cheese in the can. I don't I don't think I'm gonna get to that point. But as far as American style food to all over the country, I cannot wait to try that next year, folks. Next year, next year I'm there and I'm trying all that you have to offer. It's gonna be sports. great. Sports in America, college sports are almost as popular as professional sports. This is in true. some areas, they're actually more popular. People will have barbecues outside of stadiums for hours before the games start, paint their faces, and hate on rival academic institutions. College athletics are taken just as seriously by the fans, who don't care that the players aren't as good as the pros and aren't even getting paid. This may be baffling to our neighbors, but there is an explanation for this American pastime of watching what are literally amateur games. Unlike most fun-sized European countries, America is massive. Right. There are lots of places that just aren't anywhere near a major city where you could True. go and see a True. professional team play. Colleges are the next best thing and there's bound to be one of them nearby at least. College football and basketball also actually predate those sports professional leagues, so college athletics culture has been around forever. Number six, prescription drug commercial. Before we get to the prescription drug commercials, folks, tell me if this is true. What do you uh, prefer, your college sports team that is closest to you or your major sports team that is close, closest to you? I'd definitely be interested to know. I definitely understand that point you know there's 50 states in the united states of america so there's colleges everywhere so there's bound to be a college closer to you than maybe your major sports team in the nba or nfl so and i guess that college team better represents uh you know your state most likely but uh yeah that is something that's very unique to america because very seldomly across the world does college sports garner so much attention? It's mainly just the professional sports. You know, back home in South Africa, where rugby is our biggest sport, we only care about the professional teams and the national team. We don't really watch, you know, the 
the college teams that much. So this is definitely something unique to America. And it's I'm, I'm, I can't wait to watch a college game. Let me know which ones I should watch. I'm, I'm leaning towards going to Texas, but let me know if I should go somewhere else. Non-Americans who travel to the U.S. are often surprised to find that there are advertisements for prescription drugs on regular television. You can't go and buy them from stores, so the commercials urge viewers to ask their doctor about them. Yeah. In 2016, Kantar Media, a firm that tracks multimedia advertising, reported that nearly 800,000 prescription drug advertisements were aired on television, which was a 65% increase from just four years prior. Basically, the reason these commercials don't exist in other countries is because they aren't legal in other countries. In fact, the only other country where these kinds of commercials exist is New Zealand. Really? The US pharmaceutical industry is huge. It generated $425 billion in 2015. If they're allowed to advertise, of course they're going to. And it works. Direct-to-consumer advertised drugs tend to sell better than drugs that aren't. But they're controversial, and it seems the reason America allows them comes down to our free speech protections under the First Amendment. Governments of most countries around the world think they're dangerous, and the research suggests they're not wrong. Even the American Medical Association has called for a ban on them, as these advertisements have been proven by studies to broaden the scope of who gets treated with prescription drugs. They also lead to patients being influenced to take newer, less effective drugs that often cost more. For example, Vioxx, which was later withdrawn as it caused life-threatening side effects such as increasing the risk of heart attack and strokes. Number 5. Damn, that's crazy. Soccer. America, of course, isn't the only country that plays soccer, but hey. we are one of the hey only- Hey guys, check, check this out. Check this out. Uh, right there. If you can see this, that's actually a South African flag. So we've got the German flag, American flag, South African flag. And then uh, look, by means of her face paint, looks like it's a Brazilian flag on the far right. Of course, isn't the only country yeah, Brazilian that plays flag. soccer. But we are one of the French only flag. countries that cause the game you play with your feet, soccer, and the one you play with your hands, football. We stand with countries like Australia, Korea, South Africa, and Italy in not calling the sport football. Understandably, Africa. it Let's confuses go. most of the world. So, what is the origin of this counterintuitive name? Soccer is an abbreviation of association, which came from association football, the official name for the game. The suffix er was added as a common jocular slang term of the time. The reason the name is stuck is because American football developed in the mid-19th century, evolving right. from the British game of rugby. Back then, rugby was loosely known as football, but it was often called rugby to make the distinction. And that's what that's the sport that is most popular in South Africa. We love rugby. But I'm I'm softening. I'm softening to um, uh, you know football in America. I'm, I'm I'm loving it, getting to know it. You know, I'm watching more games as Interesting as it is, I'm probably one of the only South Africans that are watching as many NFL games as I am. All these sports were about moving the ball forward, but as the game developed across the pond, Americans developed different rules about how you were allowed to do it and what you could wear. The most popular rule set in England ended up being the one where you can only use your feet. And the most popular rule set in America ended up being the one where you get to smash into each other. Hence why the two totally different sports have the same names in the two countries. Number 4. Not including sales tax. Wherever there's a discussion of American sales tax on the internet, you can find non-Americans telling their tales of being shocked at the final price because they didn't realize that sales tax wasn't included. In uh, most countries, the price tag on an item includes the part you have to pay yeah. to the government, so they can build roads and other things. But not here in the US. This is because sales tax in America can vary by county, so something could cost a slightly different amount just a mile away. There are also that very specific sense. laws about what gets sales taxed. For instance, if you order coffee to go, there will not be sales tax in California. But if you sit down in the cafe and eat a donut, you will have to pay sales tax. Essentially, with all these rules, it becomes difficult to put things on a price tag. Number three, not using the metric system. What's wrong the United with you States folks, of America huh? has no need for universally accepted and logical measurement systems because Thomas Jefferson said so. In 1790, <laughs> when the metric system was being developed, he simply decided not to bring it to America. So it didn't happen. America, Liberia, and Myanmar are the only countries in the world. Thomas, you could have made things so simple, huh? But now we have to use feet and inches. 
and all of that. Bro, they use the imperial system. Liberia uses the same units that America does, and Myanmar is a bit of a mess. <laughs> they use a combination of their own totally unique Burmese wow. measuring units, American imperial units, and metric units. That is crazy. So they may have the distinction of being the only country with a bigger headache when it comes to this than America. But surely now that Thomas Jefferson is long dead, we could just switch over, right? Well, it isn't that simple. It would cost a lot of money to switch over the country's whole infrastructure to the metric system now that the US already uses their own unique imperial system. The closest the US has gotten is that today, in US schools, kids learn about both the imperial and metric systems. So most of us do have a basic understanding of how the metric system works, even if we never really use it. Even if you buy a measuring tape in the US, it will have both imperial and metric units on it. Throughout American history, there have been various attempts to reform the system and switch over, but none have succeeded. It would seem as though Thomas Jefferson's wish for an extra special system shall live on for you the see pursuit smiling of the future. Down from above, it hasn't folks. come without its consequences, though, as this confusion has led to enormous mistakes, like the Mars orbiter that was lost by NASA because of a metric system mix-up. Number two, month before the day. The United States is the only country that, when writing out the date, puts the month before the day. And it seems to extremely aggravate the rest of the world. Most other countries write the day, then the month, then the year. The majority of countries and most of Europe and South America do it this way. Right. It seems logical as the units of time are then in order from smallest to largest. Yeah. Also seemingly logical is how the date is written in China and Japan, which is year, month, day, or largest to smallest. So why do we format time like this? Well, unfortunately, there's no widely accepted answer as to why this is the case. The month-day-year order was used in Britain in the 1800s, but why we chose to keep it when Britain ceased to do so is something of a historical mystery. The best guess is likely that the order reflects how Americans say dates verbally. An American would be more likely to say that it's January 1st more than they would be likely to say the 1st of January. Our notation then could simply be a way of writing out what would be the most conversational. Number 1. Having a drinking age of 21. That is, a 20 that is year old high. European may be in for a shock when they fly to the US and discover that they can no longer legally drink alcohol. While you may already know about this peculiar American practice, what you may not know is why it is the case. In 1984, the US passed a law called the Drinking Age Act. It stated that if a state did not create a minimum drinking age of 21, they would lose up to 10% of their federal highway funding. The states all took the hint and made the drinking age 21. But why 21? Well, America has a long and storied past with alcohol, including prohibition. Lawmakers didn't just pick the number out of a hat. It dates back centuries to Old English common law, which states a person becomes a full adult age 21 at which age a person could, among other things, vote and become a knight. Still, as shown by this map, the US is one of just a few developed countries to have a minimum legal drinking age over 18. In fact, in some countries like Belgium and Germany, 16-year-olds are allowed oh. to purchase alcohol. Alcoholic or not, if you order a drink in America, you're probably going to get it with a lot of ice. <laughs> in most other countries, you just won't see the sheer quantity of ice that you'll get in your American beverage. Granted, you'll often get ice in your drinks in many European countries, but ice-cold beverages are the default option in America. Whereas lots of people from other countries don't have the same preference, and drinks aren't always served with ice. This cultural difference is frequently debated online. It could be because in some countries you shouldn't drink the tap water, which is where that ice came from. And in others, it just isn't common to automatically have ice with a meal at a restaurant. So, people of the internet, do you agree with the items on the list? Okay, well, that was that was fun. What do you guys think of the drinking age uh, being 21? Imagine you being, you know, from somewhere else in the world, you get together with your friends, you make a US trip, you're 20 years old, you can't wait to have a good time. And when you arrive, you can't drink any alcohol. I guess there's a lot of fun things to do without drinking. So it won't be the end of the world. You know, back in South Africa, we uh, our drinking age is 18 and our driving age is also 18. Whereas in the United States, the driving age, correct me if I'm wrong, is 16 and the drinking age is 21. What do you guys think of that? But outside of that, everything here is definitely very, very interesting. And these are the things that make the United States very unique. I love the college sports um, one that they mentioned. I love the football one, the difference between, you know, soccer and football and how it came about. Uh, 
and i love the you know, the, the food ones you know the the larger uh, portion size these are these are cool things you know about america and uh yeah i can't wait to visit um i feel like i've isolated either i'm gonna go to california or i'm gonna go to the to the south you know maybe visit somewhere like texas or something like that so i'm up in the air regarding those two if you guys have any suggestions please let me know but folks i hope you enjoyed that video and found it you know entertaining and interesting and fun just as much as i did if you did please remember to like the video and subscribe to the channel i'm uploading pretty much every single day but folks until next time i hope you have the best week possible i'll see you when i see you cheers